It's the start of the August bank holiday and the forecast is for a heat wave. 16 million motorists are expected to hit Britain's road this weekend. All right, everybody ready? Yep. On a network that's already overstretched, the M25 will be taking the brunt of the extra traffic. Everyone sort of faced like a wet weekend. Everyone should be excited. They're going away. Come on, we've got three days off. Let's go and get drunk. Well, you not get drunk, I'll get drunk. 98% <laughs> of all roadworks on the UK's motorways have been lifted, especially for the weekend. So the M25 should be running clear. Capturing the mass exodus are over a thousand CCTV cameras, monitored by a hidden army of traffic controllers. In South Mims, control room operator Emily is preparing for the worst. I'm just having a quick look, see if I can find any news stories of woe predicting the chaos that's going to be caused this weekend. Oh, here we go. Bank holiday travel chaos. 16 million drivers expected to hit the roads today. I've actually got the word Carmageddon in there. I'll be like, set the signs on the road. Carmageddon, ahead. <laughs> While most of the country is off on their holidays, traffic officers Tim and Howard are just starting their shift. I do find on a bank holiday we get a real mix of drivers. <laughs> you quite often see them, don't you? You've got a husband and wife driving. Kids in the back. Mummy, is it true that a millipede's got um, ten eyes? Not sure of the route. It's a bit cough very far. It would sound like a massive tiger. Traffic, queues, people broken down with their nans, the little kids having wheeze at the side of the road because they're 30 miles from the services. Will you stop pulling my hair? I know you're pulling my hair. <laughs> Are we there yet? Are we there yet? How long have we got to go? I want an ice cream. Sit down properly, because we're on a fast ride. And you think, oh, I'm glad I'm at work. <laughs> oh, there's some going. flashing lights up there. Oh, God. Might have been an accident. Oh, don't say that. Sierra Tango 68, 68. It's just two hours into the big bank holiday getaway and at Junction 18, Emily has her first big job of the day. We've got five vehicles into the central reservation of her. That's not good. That's not good. In heavy bank holiday traffic, a car has hit their brakes hard, causing five cars to pile up behind it. The accident has blocked the fast lane and tailbacks are already building up. In this case, we don't know if there'll be injury, injuries or not. Almost half of all accidents on the M25 involve more than one vehicle. The more cars involved, the more chance there is of serious injury, as well as further accidents from rubberneckers not paying attention to the road in front of them. Total of five cars in collision, there's no casualties, no one trapped. These drivers have all had a lucky escape. What we're going to do, we've got five or six cars in here. We're going to see what we can drive over onto the high shoulder to try and get the motor open as soon as possible. There's no injuries, which is great news. Therefore, there's no need to leave everything here from, it, from an evidence point of view so we can get everything cleared over. Two lanes are now blocked by the emergency services. Just five minutes since Tim and Howard's arrival, the traffic is already tailing back three junctions, seven miles away. So Sierra Tango 68 are now on the scene. So this one is showing where the traffic's starting to build up. It's right back at junction 21 now. Nine minutes have gone by and the vehicles are ready to be moved. Now Tim needs to bring the traffic to a halt and there's only one way to do that, by hand. Hey! So far, so good. Ugh. Right, I'm just going to throw that in there, mate. I'll sort that out. Yeah. Right. All right. Twelve minutes have now passed, and under the scorching bank holiday sun, impatience is building in the roadblock. But Tim and Howard can't release it just yet. Every last bit of debris has to be swept away. In the end, it takes less than 20 minutes for Tim and Howard to clear the scene and reopen the motorway. Trading from coming home back to Newbury for Bank Holiday weekend. Um, and then this happened. It's 
just salt at all that it's blinding sunlight and I'm ginger and I'm getting sunburned, so it's fine. Six sites got the screen clear. All four lanes reopened. A cup of tea would be lovely at this stage. So far, yeah. two hours, two hours, we have driven 77 miles in two hours. We've only got another 500. <laughs> it's really hot. How hot is it? It's 27 degrees. Oh, uh, now we're coming to a standstill. I'm not a traffic person, especially when I've got shorts on, leather seats and a sweaty ass. <laughs> I'm sliding in my seat already. But things are about to get much worse. 5 1, go ahead. Crushed under concrete and rubble, moments after hitting a footbridge. The driver of this lorry travelling along the M20 in Kent was lucky to walk away with his life. This is massive. You've got this is bank holiday weekend. We've got all that traffic going to the um, tunnel. This is going to have a huge impact because that's not going to be moved anytime soon. That's going to be horrendous. The M20 is the major link between the M25 and Dover, and was expected to take over 50,000 people to the continent this weekend. It's now closed in both directions. Managing traffic, lost souls. Thousands of holidaymakers' plans are under threat. Traffic officer Andy has the unenviable task of preventing traffic from going onto the blocked M20. Left at the lights and follow the A20. Which means pushing them back onto a heavily clogged M25. We're expecting it to be pretty heavy and this is the worst thing that could have happened um, for the bank holiday weekend. People are getting away, people are returning. Um, you know, people will be heading back to work come Monday. Nobody knows how long it will take to remove 400 tonnes of reinforced concrete. And in just two days' time, holidaymakers will be returning home in their droves. No, no, it's a uh, bridge collapse. Yeah, so, it's going to be some time. It, it, it's just funny to see the frustration in their eyes as they go by shaking their heads as if we deliberately came out here tonight, or today, and close the M20 junction for them, as if we've got nothing else better to do. It's the August bank holiday weekend, but it's no picnic for motorists. A footbridge on the M20 has been hit by a truck causing it to collapse, diverting thousands of extra vehicles onto an already congested M25 and bringing parts of the southeast to a standstill. Just to bring you up to speed now with this, uh, with this collision, uh, lorry collided with a pedestrian uh, bridge on the M20. Uh, it happened just after 12 o'clock today. Officers have told us that the, uh, the bridge on the M20 had been hit by a lorry and the crash is being dealt with as a major incident. Now, travel disruption is said to be severe, with the motorway likely to be closed for some time. Uh, this is the footbridge. Um... Obviously, they haven't updated Google Images. That's epic. I mean, not seen anything like this in the eight years I've worked here. Um, and I doubt I will again. And especially on a bank holiday weekend, they would, that would have affected so many people trying to get on their, on their holidays. Fortunately, the western side of the M25 is still flowing. Don't you forget sun cream? And oh, God, I forgot sun cream. I've got sun cream. I've got sun tanning oil as well. <laughs> See, people smile. When you're in a camper van, people smile. Chicks love it. <laughs> oh, I just had a hula hoop on me. <laughs> so I wonder just what flavour is it? Original. <laughs> Near Heathrow, traffic officers Jerry and Lindy are expecting a busy shift. You know, it's always prepare, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. I think with bank holidays, you, you, you just can't predict it. Yeah, that's all received. Another report of a traffic collision. 
Uh, it's reported as a car, these HGV, they always cause a lot of damage. Near Junction 16, a foreign truck has sideswiped a small car in its blind spot. One casualty has been reported. A paramedic is on scene and working on somebody, so it, it could be something quite serious at this time. They've seen it on camera. They believe it looks quite serious. Car versus lorry always makes your heart sink. It always has the potential to be the worst case scenario. So it's coming up on the right now. I'll go ahead with this lot first. OK. Lindy and Jerry's first priority is to make the scene safe for the paramedics to work in. What's the situation? Um, 34 year old lady with neck injury in there, so to be honest, Trump's. Have we got fire coming? I believe Trump's has already been called, yes. Foreign lorry, they've, got, they've changed lanes, so they don't see them. They're on their blind side, they miss them completely. The passenger has had a lucky escape, and the driver appears to be okay, but the paramedics are taking no chances. Everything they're doing now is precautionary. She believes it's a muscular injury. But of course, they're going to check anyway. I just want to set the lorry driver's mind at rest a little bit. He's still got a journey to do. Bless his heart, he was only on this motorway because the M20 was shut. He wouldn't have been here otherwise. The woman, she's OK. She's going to be OK. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. OK. Full concentration on your driving now, not on the lady. OK, good man. Just wait for recovery to leave, lorry to go. Police units leave and we'll bring it all in. It's all in a day's work for Jerry and Lindy. I have to say it was never my intention to become a traffic officer. It's not a role I actually ever would have thought of putting myself in. But here I am, <laughs> still here. Back at junction four of the M20, all the delayed traffic from yesterday has been turned around and sent on its way, leaving an army of engineers to try and figure out how to remove the 400 tons of bridge wreckage from the carriageway. Everybody back. Right back. To reopen the road like this um, is anyone's guess still at the moment. In less than 24 hours, millions of holidaymakers will be attempting the return journey home. I do feel a tiny bit sorry for the guy who was driving the lorry. Can you imagine when he renews his insurance, they're going to say, what was the value of your last accident? And he's going to have to say, well, it was like several million pounds in uh, <laughs> fixing a major piece of infrastructure across the main arterial road that links England and France. Um, yeah, poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. Give me one reason to stay here And I'll turn right back around Give me one reason to stay here Yeah, I'll turn right back around Said I don't want to leave you lonely to make me change my mind. Always make dirty go quicker. What is up? I thought you meant you too. <laughs> but while the rest of the nation is on holiday, Tim and Howard are quite happy to be at work. I probably spend more time with Howard than I do with my wife. That's it's sad, a, bit, isn't it? a bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> I would say that's. I always tell my wife that's why we've been married so long. Yes, we don't I, see much of each other. I agree with that, actually. We've got a report of a vehicle broken down um, in the central reservation. Um, it's two people on board and it looks like it's uh, Harley Davidson. Can you give us a number? Log 1165, yep, we're just coming down the M25 towards the M40 now so we can pick that up over. Tim and Howard have been called to an incident near junction 16 of the M25. There are reports of a broken down Harley Davidson. Danger of being in the central reservation. There's nowhere safe to stand, and people are going to be coming past you very, very quickly. Wouldn't recommend it. Wouldn't fancy hanging out there myself. They need to find the motorbike before there are any further incidents. But they too are caught up in the tailbacks it's causing. 
I can see a motorcycle down there. Put, put the dope piles on. OK. Yeah. And, and lights. lights on. Right, and everything's on. Right. The motorcyclist and their passenger are stranded by the central reservation. So Tim and Howard put on what's known as a rolling roadblock by zigzagging across the carriageway to slow down and then stop the traffic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I'll stop it before the lay-by. Then we can bring it back. And come back, yeah? Wait there a minute. Just stay where you are, all right. You OK? It's vulnerable, but I've got a flat tire. I can get it over there. Can you, that's all you've got over there. You can turn it around there and go back in front of that lorry. I'll try without dropping it. All right, OK. OK. <laughs> right, the motorcycle's got a rear flat tire. So the lady driver's going to try and get it up to the end of the lay-by there, because we've got no hard shoulder here. Very scary. Very, very scary, because then we had a back blowout. But it wasn't the right place to have one, because uh, no one gives you a lot of leeway on movement. Everyone's fighting for uh, pole position to get home. And it's not been a good day for the passenger either. No, I had just survived heart attack this morning. What? Yeah. What happened? It was a very close call. I've had three major heart attacks before. And I woke up this morning feeling rather ill, but thanks to medication and aspirin, about four aspirin later. <laughs> We're going to open the motorway. Right. OK, so we've released the traffic. We've got the motorcycle over, so everything's back to normal, back to safety again. Uh, we can clear the signs and signals, any ones that were set. And that's good, good job done. It's Sunday late afternoon and the bank holiday's nearing its end. It's been a nice bank holiday, hasn't it? It's been all right. It's been all right, hasn't it? So what actually happened in that um, M20 accident? A lorry hit the bridge. Hit the bridge? Yeah. Back at the M20, traffic officers, emergency services and contractors have been working round the clock to clear the bridge wreckage. Now, less than 30 hours since the incident, the M20 is safe for vehicles. And Lee and Howard have been tasked with releasing the M25 traffic onto the soon-to-be-reopened M20. We're reopening the main carriageway. Oh, all right, so it's all going to be open for you any second. There's our signal that we're going to be making a move. All in. All aboard. Releasing the waiting traffic must be a carefully orchestrated operation. The patrol car starts to move the traffic off slowly, gathering pace to the legal speed limit until they release the roadblock. If we was just to release the cones and... Yeah, there you go, it's all open now. It would probably be like wacky races and there would be further incidents, so you have to have some control. Thank you, Thank you. Is up. Oh. Echo 25 has just released traffic, over. Lights are out. Thank you, is up. Thank you, Lee. Echo 2-5. Yeah, rolling mode's been released. Um, all four lanes are running. We are state two over. It goes the traffic down towards the M20. Over the course of this weekend, over 5,000 incidents on the motorway have been dealt with. 400 tonnes of concrete have been cut up and disposed of, and over a million people have used the M25. Oh, oh done. Yay. Oh, I'm so hot. I need to get out. Most of them without incident. Whoa. Wow. Oh, my God. Is that what he hears? Yeah. Bank Holiday Weekend loves to throw something up to surprise us, and it, it came up trumps. <laughs> The M25 is very unpredictable. It, it's a victim of its own success, quite frankly. Go get some toast. This is Emily going on her break. Yeah. She likes to make toast to Marmite. <laughs> yeah. She screwed up the M25. And she likes tea. <laughs> and now she's going to go and make toast. Next time, who owns the road? You can't stop here. Go. Car or lorry. Everybody needs lorries. And there's loads of them. 
sounds like we've got injuries. Hello, mate, are you injured? Drivers were both very lucky. 